Hi everybody, thank you for joining us today. Our webinar titled, What's New in Enterprise version 3.4, bringing efficiencies to your data standardization and compliance efforts. My name is Oleg Zvinogradsky, and I'm Director of Customer Success here at Pinnacle 21. Before we begin today's webinar, I just wanna take a few minutes to introduce you to our customer success team and give you a quick oversight and overview of the things we have planned for you this year as part of the customer success rollout. Uh, as I introduce myself, I'm always in Garatsky and I've been at Pinnacle for the last two years working on a number of different initiatives and had the pleasure of working with a number of our users already. We also had John Kim join us earlier this year as our first customer success manager. John comes to us with a lot of experience working in healthcare IT, and she's already engaged many of you uh, to help you onboard and work with you very closely as we roll out a number of these customer success initiatives. This is a quick overview of our initiatives this year that I want to spend a few minutes going over. Customer success for us this year really means about focusing how we can help our enterprise users achieve daily and long-term goals. We understand that not everybody uses enterprise every day and it's not part of your daily processes. But we also understand that it is a critical part of the job that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so our objective is to help you use enterprise to achieve daily and long-term goals of your job. We believe that we can do this by proactively engaging and communicating better. So many of you have had good experience working with our customer success teams, with our customer experience teams, um, and you've already understood that we have a great amount of internal subject matter expertise. What we want to do now is, in, more, in a more proactive way, engage our users, understand the specific needs, understand what your points, pain points are, and understand what we can do to help you better leverage enterprise in your day-to-day -day jobs. That might mean better training, might mean understanding the new features, might mean additional resources. And so we want to reach out and understand what those specific needs are, and over the course of the next couple months, provide those resource, resources to you. What we'll be doing over the course of this year and well beyond that is rolling out a number of webinars. Our webinar here on the new features in 3.4 is just one of the many that will come um, over the course of the next couple of years. The knowledge base that we're expanding on will be both internal, inside the application, as well as outside. We're also planning a number of best practices, showing you how to use the tool better, help and leverage how others use the tool so we can all together improve its overall use. And we certainly want to make sure that we bring you other resources as well. You'll be seeing Pinnacle Points emailed to you, which are essentially did you knows in an email format, again, helping you understand how to use the tool and better. A number of our customers will be working for our customer success plans, which are step-by-step -step processes to leverage the different resources we have to ensure that you're using the tool correctly. We're also focusing on the customer journey. Over the course of your adoption of enterprise, there's a number of different steps that every user goes through, from onboarding to hypercare, adoption, and eventually to a successful and steady state. We wanna provide every stage of that adoption phase with the right tools, the right resources, and the right help. And ultimately, we wanna optimize enterprise's value. We wanna make sure that you get the most out of enterprise, and we're here to help you do that. So we hope to get some feedback from you over the next couple months as we engage, and as you see a lot of our communications come forward, we certainly hope to hear from you and, and get as much feedback as possible. With that, I wanna advertise our Pinnacle 21 Live 2018 event. Uh, we had an event last year around the same time in Philadelphia, which was a great success. This year, we're celebrating our 10-year anniversary, and we plan to have a much larger event. It's going to be our biggest global event to date, and we're expecting well over 100 users across a very large number of our client base. We're going to have breakout sessions. We're going to have a number of different agenda topics, uh, webinar, uh, networking events, um, um, as well as a number of trainings and other presentations. So we hope to have you there. We're excited that this event is coming up fairly soon. A number of people have already started signing up and we hope you're able to join us. So as we kick off today's webinar and dive into the details of the 3.4 release, uh, you will see that there's an area on the GoToWebinar panel where you can ask questions. Please address any questions um, into this text box here and we will 
answer them either during the webinar at the end or provide answers afterwards in writing. So at this time, we'll present Max, the CEO of Pinnacle 21. Thank you, Oleg, for the introduction. Um, I hope you guys will join us at the P21 live event this year. This is 10 years since I started Open CDISC. So uh, we're hoping to have a great special event. All right, so let's talk about what we have new in Enterprise 3.4. There's a number of uh, significant enhancements that I think will help you out. Um, one of them is being able to validate your data against your own standards and against your own terminology, in addition to validating against CDISC standards and terminology. Um, so I'll go and I'll show you how to use that. Um, we have introduced a lot of new rules and additional standards in this release as well. We'll cover all those and then what you need to know. Um, there's also uh, this little helper, we call it the where clause builder, that will help those that are creating defined XML um, and a few other uh, small enhancements. So let's start with validation against the sponsor standards and terminologies. Um, I'm gonna demo this in a second, but basically what we did is, um, you guys I'm sure are aware, there's a number of checks now that validate against the CDISC standards. It checks to make sure that the labels match, that the data types match, uh, that your terms are within the CDISC terminology. Uh, but we didn't have any checks before that did the same exact thing against your own internal standards. Um, so what we did is we added 15 new rules, um, and you'll notice that they start with SP, um, and they'll have very similar numbers to the existing checks that check against the CDISC standards and CDISC CT. So you'll know that you know they're they're identical. So here's a couple of examples. Um, so the first check SD0055 it checks to make sure that your uh, uh, variable data type uh, matches the one defined by CDISC. Uh, well, we created SP0055 that does exactly the same thing by checking against your data type defined in your standard. Um, we have a similar example with terminology, CT2001, which checks to make sure that uh, the terms are within the non-extensible code list from CDISC. We created SP2001 that checks against your own terminology that you can upload into our system. Um, and you'll find the same pattern across all 15 rules. So Let's jump right into the demo so I can show you how to use that. So the first thing is you need to have the standards designer role to see this functionality in the system. So if you don't have that role, you might have not seen this. Um, if you're somebody who's gonna be responsible for uh, uploading standards and terminology into the system, make sure you have the standards designer role. Uh, when you have a role, you're going to notice that you have this import standard button and you have a similar button on terminologies, import terminologies. So when you click on the button, you'll notice that there's two different ways to import the standard and terminology. One of them is you can use a pinnacle template and you can use the sp sponsor template. The sponsor template requires us to t develop a uh, basically an adapter, a custom adapter that matches your format of your specification. I know some of you already have those adapters. Um, if you don't and you believe that's an option, you can contact our customer success team and they can help you with that. Uh, but let's take a look at the Pinnacle format. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and open it up right here. Um, this is a very similar format to your defined at XML. Excel spec, there's some additional columns, there's a few columns missing, uh, but this should be very familiar to any one of you who are creating defined at XML. Um, but you'll notice there's a couple of very important fields. So in the first tab, you can create your own standards. So this is a fictional Acme Pharma company um, that are creating their own SDTM standard. Um, version, you can name it whatever you want, spring 2018, version 25, it's completely up to you. Um, publisher is you. Um, the but the most important fields are the base standard and the base standard version. So when you create your own standard, it's important for the system to know which version of CDISC you're extending because um, I'll, I'll show you, it will factor into how the checks are executed. Um, and you can go ahead and you can define your data sets 
and your variables and your value level metadata, sort of just like using the defined XML tool. So what happens? So let's let's go ahead and close this. So uh, you basically go ahead, you import a standard, I select the pinnacle template. Um, let's grab the let's grab the the spreadsheet that I just showed you in a second ago. So what it does it uh, it parses the spreadsheet and then it ports it into the system. So now I, you notice I just imported Acme as the TMIG, the spring release. You can go in. You'll notice that one benefit that this benefit has existed in prior versions is that we actually validate the standard as well. So you're going to see if there's anything wrong with your standard, if there's any inconsistencies within the standard, if there's any inconsistencies between the base standard and your standard. So we have all these validation checks that happen on your standard as was available, I believe, since version 3.0, 3.1, 3.1, excellent. Um, so once you have your standard into the system, you need to, when you're ready to push it out, you, you click this little deploy to production button. And what's gonna happen is when you go to configure your, your data package, so let's go ahead and, um, um, grab the project we have now. And let's go ahead and add a new data package. You'll notice in the standards dropdown, your standard will now show up. So what happens now is that when you're going to be validating, you're not going to be validating just against the CDISC standard. You're going to be validating against your own standard. And you'll notice that the terminology has the same uh, drop down the sponsor terminology will show up in here as well when you import that and what's going to happen is that it's going to use that base standard field to make sure that it still runs all the cdisk checks right so you're not going to lose any of the cdisk checks you're just going to get those additional 15 checks to execute um that's it once you set up your data package you run validation just like you did before uh, quite easy. So let's take a look at what actually happens when you run the validation. So we already ran some before, so let's go grab one of these studies and take a look. So if I go into the issues, you'll notice that I got all these SP checks firing. Right? So sponsor data type variable mismatch that I showed you before, sponsor required variable not found, you know, uh, variable appears in the data set, but not in the sponsor standard. So all of these checks you had before against the CDIS standards are now, will also check against your own standard. Um, so, you know, this is a brand new functionality. I hope you guys find useful. If you have any questions, type them in and I'll answer them at the end. All right, so let's take a look. Um, I have some slides that I prepare for you. We will share the slides afterwards. So I know we didn't mention that. So now let's talk about the rules. Uh, so I know a lot of people have uh, been waiting for new rules. There's a significant number of new rules in this release. Uh, they We have um, significantly enhanced SDTM uh, 3.2 rules. We added 90 new rules. You'll note them. This is the, the ID ranges on the bottom. Um, we introduced Adam 1.1 support as well as send 3.1 support. So let's go ahead and, and look at each one. So one of my previous webinars, um, I covered the the new conformance rules that have been developed by CDISC. There's a total of 410 rules. When we initially looked at it, we determined that about 325 of them progr were programmable. But after a deep analysis, we actually determined that 356 of them are programmable. And what, the, what that means by programmable is that we can actually auto, we can write a, you know, an automated check. Um, the rest of them are things that cannot be checked automatically, and it's something that your SMEs should be looking at manually. But out of those 356 checks, um, we have already implemented 304 of them. So they are available in 3.4. Um, the remaining 52 are pending, and they're pending for many different reasons. There are a good number of checks that um, basically require clarification from CDISC or FDA or both. 
uh, there are either conflicts between uh, the what, what the CDIS put out and what FDA put out, uh, or there are some you know issues with uh, with the with the business rules published by CDIS. It's a good chance that we we're not going to implement a good number of them until CDIS releases the next version of the checks. Uh, but we will try to implement as many of them as possible uh, without introducing any checks that would cause you a lot of false positives. So we we're very careful going forward to make sure that we only introduce checks that are not going to cause you a lot of headache. Uh, and there are some small number of checks that require an upgrade to our validator. Um, so once that is completed, we will introduce them as well. But now with this release, you definitely have a lot more SDTM checks. Um, this brings you very close uh, in compliance to what the entire AG um, has as far as business rules. Uh, and these are on top of the FDA business rules that have already been implemented in prior releases. So this is a, by far the most complete set of SDTM rules that we ever had. Now, add on 1.1. I know you, uh, this is probably the most popular questions we get in our support uh, forum, like when is this going to be available? So I'll give you a little bit of a background. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, we we met with, uh, you know, CDISC and FDA, and uh, there was a, an agreement reached that FDA is not going to accept any new standards until CDISC publishes the rules. Well, FDA didn't hold their word, and um, they announced that starting March 15th, a month ago, they are beginning to accept Adam 1.1. Um, but the problem is CDISC is still working on the rules. And the public review is, is, is planned for August, September timeline with the final rules being published in December, which put us in a difficult position because FD is accepting it, people want the rules, CDISC is not done with their job. So Pinnacle is going to have to fill in and then fill in the gap. And what we did is we have taken whatever CDISC has up to this date and we have implemented it as a beta set of rules, right? So we this is the first time we ever actually done this. So we are going to basically stay on top of what CDISC is doing and re-release new updates to the set of rules as CDISC is developing them. So you have something that you can work with today. And basically, once it's final, you know, we'll basically have something immediately available. There's not going to be any delay. So let's look at it in a little bit more detail. There's a lot of interesting facts about Atom 1.1 that I found interesting. Um, so one of the things is that a lot of people in the past have struggled with, you know, recognizing the data sets. That was the biggest problem is that if we, if we identified your current data set as BDS, you had a lot of false positive messages. So in this particular version, there has been a lot of work done about trying to identify the data sets correctly. So this is the type of data sets that we can identify with this release. You have your, obviously you have your ADSL and ADAE. I know ADE is a current data set, but there are special rules with ADE and it's sort of identified separately. You have your BDS and BDS is basically any data set that has the param CD and AVAL. So any data set that's gonna have those two variables are gonna be identified as BDS. Then you have occurrence and occurrence is any data set that has a TRT term and no param CD, <laughs> right? So that's, that's, that's the signature, right? Um, so, if any if any data set has this combination of variables, we're going to identify it as occurrence. And then any other data set that starts with AD, so it's a it's an atom data set, but did not match any of the previous signature, is going to be validated as atom other, which is basically a subset of the rules that applies to it basically any, any atom data set. So with this combination, we're going to basically provide the most complete validation of atom we have done before. So this we already piloted this, and it does seem to 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 grab most of the data sets much better than the previous releases. So we're really looking forward to getting your feedback once you guys get it to try. All right, the next thing is what is all these? What's been added in Atom 1.1? So um, so far, CDISC has added 45 new business rules. Um, we have implemented them. This is the range starting with AD 323. But they also deprecate a lot of rules. And this is something that, you know, we, we're not really sure if this is, um, is going to stand in the final version or how the regulatory agencies will react to this. The rules that were deprecated are basically deprecated because um, 
the Adam team tries to reduce the number of false positives, right? So for example, time to event, there was a lot of rules for time to event. There's really no good way to identify a data set as time to event. There's no guaranteed way. Now, we typically rely, we say if it's a sensor variable, then it's time to event, but it's not 100%. So what Adam team done is they basically just removed all those checks. So I'm not sure if it's a good approach because I would rather have the checks and have them be fail, you know, have false positive in some cases, but at least I would have some checks. So I'm not really sure if this is gonna stand uh, we're not sure the regulatory agencies have not commented yet on these rules. Uh, they might decide to keep them as part of their own business rules. So we're not really sure yet. Um, and there is a number of other checks um, that you know would produce exceptions that were removed. Um, but once again, we're not sure it's possible that they will be retained by the regulatory agencies as their own checks. So we will definitely keep you up informed and we'll let you know how this develops. Um, and finally, there was a lot of rules, existing rules, where the algorithm has been modified slightly. And it's interesting because it was only modified for Adam 1.1. So in Adam 1.0, still the old algorithm in 1.1, in slightly different algorithm. So we're not really sure if this is gonna, uh, you know, be in the final version or not. But basically I'll give you, there's a, there's a good example here. So there was 48 different uh, inconsistent value checks where you would basically, you know, for example, compare your TRT8 versus your TRT AN, you know? So uh, the way it used to work, and this is the original check AD96, is that we would um, run the check whenever the primary variable, in this case, TRTA was populated. So as long as TRTA was populated, we would run the check. So if, if the numeric version of the variable was null, we would still run the check because, you know, consistency, whether you have null value or value, you still need to have consistency against your primary variable. In the new version, they have basically relaxed, relaxed the requirement and they said only run the check when both the character and the numeric variable are populated. So that actually reduces the number of, of data points that are gonna be checked. And it's only done in 1.1, while in, in 1.0, the, still the old rule applies. So we're not really sure if this is gonna stand or if, of, or, or if both standards are going to be upgraded to the new version or both standards are going to stay at the old version. This is why we're considering this a beta release. Things will change. Uh, but what we did in the meantime is we basically took all the existing checks and we copied them and we created them with a little B on the end. And the, those new checks implement the new algorithm and they apply to Adam 1.1. So this is some interesting things that um, that definitely in Adam 1.1 that uh, you guys should keep an eye on. Um, we will keep you informed of how it changes. Uh, with SEND, um, with SEND, the only thing I, uh, I'm i gonna say is that the CDIS group is also working on the SEND rules. Uh, they're still in the early stages. There's really nothing yet um, to implement. So what we have done by adding 3.1 support is we basically took all the existing checks in 3.0 we added all the new domains that are available in 3.1 and we apply those checks to those domains. So the 3.1 implementation is basically all the same checks as 3.0, just covering all the new data sets. So at least you have something to, to use as you guys are preparing your data. All right, so now let's move to the work clause builder. Um, so I'll go, gonna ha go ahead and switch over to the demo again. Um, so one of the things that we had Let's go ahead and grab um, I'm gonna go ahead and load uh, the defined XML that uh, CDISC provides with Atom. Uh, this is a good example of complex where clauses. So let's go ahead and import this guy. So um, what we have noticed is that whenever the where clauses get long, uh, folks are, you know, are having difficulties sometimes with completing them. So I'll just give you an example. Let's start with just the where clauses first. Um, I mean, obviously most people can go ahead and type in, you know, equals 
ABC, right? And most people are comfortable uh, with doing that, right? Um, but when you go to something like Oops, I loaded into the wrong study. Let's go ahead and log in as a different user. All right, let's take a look at this again. All right, better. So we have all this analysis is all metadata, right? So we have this selection criteria, which is the where clause for the analysis of metadata. As you can see, they get a lot more complicated. And this is where people had the difficulties a lot of times typing the stuff in. So what we did is we added a helper function. So if you are comfortable typing them in, type them in. But if you'll notice is that there's little pencil that appears now in every cell. So if I click on a little pencil, I get a form view of this. So instead of you having to type in a long string, and by the way, if you look at the bottom here, it shows you the string. You can go ahead and you can, so if, let's say I want to add another criteria, I click end, you know, I pick any var you know, any data set, I pick whatever variables are available, you know, less than, you know, 25. And you will build this on the fly, and I can just go ahead and save. So it's just a if you know if you if you're struggling with a work clause, you always have the little pencil. Just click on it and it will help you complete your work clause. Or if it complains that your work clause is wrong and you're not sure why it's wrong, just click on the little pencil and it's gonna help you resolve that conflict. All right, so let's see what other uh, functionality um, do we add? So there is another one that is interesting. A lot of folks were asking us, so we used to, have, when you export the reviewer guide, um, we would have a separate reviewer guide, one for FDA and one for PMDA. And a lot of folks said, well, we don't want to maintain two different reviewer guides. Um, we want to just have one master reviewer guide that we send to both agencies. So we listened and now you have this all option, which will basically create a one reviewer guide with both FD and PMDA um, issues, so you can explain them all in one document. Um, there was a lot of other um, minor enhancements. Um, we added some more information to when you export the report, there's some additional information on um, uh, the first tab that tells you when it was generated, what the project is, and so forth. Uh, we also put in some performance enhancements in a few places throughout the system. Most of you will probably not have noticed. It only happened in, if with folks who had a lot of data or folks that you know, would upload a lot of standards. Uh, most of you probably would never notice it, but we did introduce those. Um, um, but that basically summarizes major enhancements in here. Um, one of the things that you guys are gonna get is you're gonna get release notes. Um, release notes are gonna have a very detailed description of all of our enhancements, all the bugs we fixed. Um, the customer success team will make that available to you. And now with being 11.30, I'm, I'm on time for the first time. I'm very proud of this. Um, I will go ahead and I'll, we'll start looking at your questions. All right. All right, so let's look at the first one. So the first one is, all right, so when, when there's a sponsor validation for CT, does it override the CDIS validation where there is a check for extended terminologies? That's a good question. So you have this CT2002 check, which checks extens ex uh, you know, against extensible terminology. And a lot of folks, you know, it, it's completely normal to extend control terminology. And a lot of folks get upset. Why do I have this check? Uh, and what, what's important to understand is that this check really is in the next one, you know, when we um, 
you know, let me take a little tangent because I think it's important to answer this question. So one of the things important to understand is that FDA has removed the concept of severity. Uh, we haven't done it yet in this release, and this is going to happen in version four. Um, so FDA basically said, we don't know, we, severities don't mean anything to us. Um, they said that you need to fix or explain any business rules that we put out there. Um, if there is a rule like CT2002, the point of this rule is for you to be able to have a chance to explain how you extend the, the terminology, right? Um, so any check that produces sort of, you know, uh, basically a potential issue, um, not a, like, a, you know, for example, CT2001, non-extensible terminology, it's a definite problem, you know, 100% that you have an issue. C2002, it's a potential issue. What does it mean? Sometimes people extend the terminology by using synonyms or they extend it in the ways that you're not supposed to. So the reason the check is there is to give you an opportunity to basically just take a second look to make sure that it is not a problem, that you did extend it in a way that is allowed. Um, and that's why those checks exist. They don't exist, um, you know, to... You know, they exist there really because, you know, FDA does rely on terminology significantly, especially when you look at the, the Genus Warehouse, terminology is the way they're going to be able to stack the data. If, if everybody uses different terminology, they can't stack the data. So that's why they're there. So they're never going to be removed. But what we're doing is, um, in version four, what we're doing is we're going back to what severity used to be before it was hijacked by the regulatory agencies. If you, those of you who used OpenCDisk from the beginning, you'll notice that in the config document, it's not called severity, it's called type. And when we created that field, the intention was to tell you whether this is a definitely a problem or a potential problem. So error was, you definitely have a problem, and warning was, you have a potential problem, go take a look, you figure out. And then we also had notice. And notice is really what CT2002 should be. It's just informational. Here's how you extended your terminology. You don't have to do anything about it, but it's there because it's valuable information, right? That you need to, you know, because you should check to make sure that you extended it correctly. So once we have the sponsor's rules, they're not going to disable the CT2002 rule because this is a, a business rule from FDA and we can't disable them by introducing your own terminology. So you'll have both of them and you'll need to still, you know, obviously you want to make sure that it matches your, you know, so how you figure out the business rules around your own terminology, um, it, it, it's up to you, but you still have to do the CT2002 rule. Sorry, I know not, uh, probably a lot of people are not happy with that answer. Um, how will this new checks affect the score? That's a good question. Um, so the sponsor uh, checks do not currently affect the score. Um, we we haven't figured out yet how to factor that in. I think we will in the future, but at this time, it has absolutely no effect on the score. Um, so there was a ch another clarification whether um, you know SP checks replace any existing checks. They don't. They're just additional checks. All the existing checks will still fire. Um, Let's see. All right, here's another one. Um, how long after CDISC releases add-on 1.1 will we expect to have final rules in enterprise? Um, I mentioned that already. Um, because we're basically releasing in parallel to CDISC, you're going to have, and Pinnacle um, re, people are on, this, on the Atom team working with the team on developing the rules. So, as soon as there's a final, we will have a release. So basically, I would say at the same time. Um, and it will be near final because as we go through public review, we're going to keep updating as we go. So whenever it's final, you'll have final. It's, there's not going to be any gaps. Um, oh, there's a question about uh, whether these rules are being deployed to the regulatory agencies. That's a really good question. Um, so FDA is, they always like to have the latest and the greatest. Uh, they always have the latest. Um, when we release Enterprise 3.4, we release it to FDA at the same time. So they have this version already installed. It was actually, I think it was just installed like a couple of days ago. 
Um, so they will have all the same rules. They understand that they're beta. Um, they want to test them as well. They want to make sure uh, that, you know, they, um, especially those changes that I described where the rules were removed and, you know, they want to be able to, to try them out. Uh, obviously, there's already Atom 1.1 data coming in, so they want to be able to use it. Uh, PMD currently are still on the old version of Enterprise. They're still in 305, but we are uh, looking to upgrade them. They're most likely going to upgrade directly to version 4. So PMDA basically will not have any of this until version 4. That's that's as far as we know right now. Maybe plans will change. Um, let's see, what's the next question? Do we anticipate any more add-on 1.1 rules? Or this the 45, that's, that's all you have. Um, there's probably going to be some more. Not a lot, uh, because it is getting close to... Um, you know uh, the the release uh, for public review, so we don't expect a lot of new rules, but there will there will definitely be, be some changes. I think a lot of changes will be on you know what's removed from the previous release and how it, are the algorithms going to be consistent or not consistent. There's still going to be a lot of I think decisions made about sort of those details, but as far as new rules, I think you have most of them in 3.4. Um, is there any relationship between the SP rules and the MD rules? All right. So obviously somebody has already been using the standards functionality. Um, so when I imported the standard, you notice that, um, you know, let, me, let me go ahead and, and show it. So when I imported the standard, you had all these issues. These are the MD rules. Right, so MD rules check the quality of your actual standard and the quality of your terminology. But the SP rules check that your data matches your standards and terminology. So they're, they're, they're not relate, they're, they work together. So first you make sure your standard is consistent, right? And then second is then you make the, sure that your data is consistent with your standard. So they're, they both work together. And obviously, when you import your standard, you want to make sure that you reduce the number of MD uh, issues. Uh, you should definitely look through all these. Um, these been, you know, they, they've been vetted pretty well, so uh, you know th th they're very valuable. And we're very interesting. If you have any feedback about them, if there's any way to improve them, let us know. All right, there's a lot of questions. So, if whatever questions we're not going to be able to cover today, um, we will. Um, write them up like we used to do in previous webinars, so we're gonna provide it to all of you. Uh, where can we find the, the listing of non-programmable rules? All right, so, um, and this is just a general question about where is this information gonna be posted? Um, so, one of the things you need to know is that when you go into any standard in the system, and by the way, um, any role has access to browse the standards, so even if you have the lowest role in the system, you can still browse the standards. Um, when you go into the standards, so let's say I pick um, add on 1.1, right? I can click on the rules tab, and this is the entire listing of all of our rules. So every standard, you can get a listing, you can download it right here. Um, so you have them available to you all, at all times now. As far as the gaps between the standards, this is something we, you know, we have some, a lot of initiatives with our customer success this year, but we're gonna be launching a, basically a pretty extensive knowledge base uh, later this year. Um, our goal is to maintain a list of all gaps, all known issues um, that's gonna be publicly available. Um, this will include things like this, like whenever we implement um, you know, rules that are published by the regulatory agencies or by CDISC. If there's any gaps for whatever reason, those will be on the knowledge base. Uh, we're going to say why there's a gap. If there's any rules that are conflicting, you know, what's the status on them? So all of that information we're hoping to put out later this year, maybe in time for a P21 live conference. So I'm hoping. Uh, but yes, we we really we understand that there's and by the way, now that these the amount of rules exploded, I mean I remember when I created OpenCDS, there was only 104 rules and one standard. So it's it's really becoming a problem for for folks to to know what's going on and, and to keep an eye on it. So we do understand that and you know new times require new solutions. So we will um 
you know, we will try to provide that information to you. But in the meantime, if you want to know what rules are there, just write, browse the standard, click on the rule step, and you're going to see all the rules. All right, let's see what else we got. Um, wow, well, there's literally three questions in a row for the same question. Um, oh, here's a question about community. Is when is this going to be available in community? So um, community um, is going to have, definitely the SDTM checks are going to be put into community in the next release, which is a 3.0. We're still, we don't have a release date yet. There's still some outstanding technical issues that we're trying to resolve. Uh, but we're hoping in the next couple of months, we'll put out 3.0 for community. That will have the three, two rules. But we're uh, going to be very careful about putting non-finalized rules in community. Uh, we, we are afraid of confusion that is going to cause, you know, people sometimes take what we put out you know, they misinterpret, uh, you know, wh what the intent is. So our philosophy right now is community is only going to get rules that have been finalized by CDISC or FDA. So if CDISC and FDA hasn't finalized them, community doesn't get them. But enterprise, because we can communicate to you, we know who you are, uh, you know, community users, we have no idea who our community users are. We, we don't require you to register to download the software. We can... Uh, provide you the, the the knowledge and uh, you know information to make sure that you know how to interpret the new rules correctly. Uh, so there is definitely going to be a gap. It, you know, sometimes it really depends on on the timing or when CDS publishes the rules and FDA accepts them. In this particular case, there's going to be a gap. Uh, but you know, for other standards, if it's published and FDA accepts them at the same time, there's not going to be any gap. It's really going to be depending on what happens with um, you know with the publications. Um, all right, let's see. Um, um, can, you know, where can we get the template for sponsored terminology? That's a great question. So let me show you this. So when you go ahead and you import, so let me show you terminology. When you click import terminology, you're going to have a little, if you need a blank template, download it here. So this is the terminology one. If you go into the standards, same exact link on the bottom. So you can always get the, the, the blank template. Um, if you need us to send you the one with the CDISC standard in it, uh, just shoot a request to customer success team and we can send you that template populated with ESDTM 3.2 or Adam 1.1 or whatever you guys need. And we'll probably make them available at some point somewhere. <laughs> just another thing to put on the list. All right, let's see. All right. All right. They're, they're giving me the, <laughs> you know, the, the hook. Um, all right. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up because we have only two minutes left. Um, so just as a summary, uh, maybe you want to take this one since this is uh, instructions of how they can get 3.4 <laughs> thanks max uh thanks max for the presentation so just to wrap things up um the questions that came in and were not directly addressed by max we will address them in writing and make them available as we will make the slides available and uh, additional information about the 3.4 release uh but in terms of next steps with getting 3.4 there are a couple clients that have already started to upgrade um there is a process for some of these clients to get that on you know through their validation processes, their CSV groups, et cetera. So we're working already with a number of clients, but if you are interested and you're ready to upgrade, uh, the release notes are available on our service desk. Um, so you can certainly see those and we will make the link available shortly to the release notes. You can also submit a request for an upgrade via service desk. Uh, many of you have already had the experience submitting tickets and requests for upgrades. And certainly we would like to follow that same process by submitting a ticket, letting us know, uh, and then we will work with you to schedule the appropriate upgrade time. Uh, and again, as Max mentioned, uh, contact your customer success team. So you have an email down there, success at Pinnacle 21. That's one way to contact us. You can certainly reach out to John, myself. Uh, you can submit a ticket, uh, contact Mike or Travis, uh, certainly for additional information. We're all here to help you out. Uh, we're all accessible and uh, hopefully responsive to your needs as well. Uh, so please reach out and we'll take the necessary next steps to get 3.4 installed. 
Uh, and we will post the information on this webinar as well as the answers to the questions uh, by next week. So you'll have that available in case uh, some of your colleagues could not attend the webinar today. Um, so that's really sums up the webinar. Um, go to the last slide. Just some um, social media resources here. We're right? trying to promote our social media. <laughs> yes. Um, um, just one more plug. Um, I heard just a couple of days ago the next webinar, uh, there's going to be actually a public webinar um, talking about uh, best practices and populating your defined XML, what goes in, what doesn't go in. It will happen during the week of May 16th. So look, we're going to be putting out an email um, with the details uh, on the times of the webinar, uh, probably in the next couple of days. So that's the next webinar. And by the way, our, this year we're planning to have very frequent webinars, uh, both public webinars, which are basically, uh, you know, trying to best practices that would apply to anybody, community and enterprise, and then enterprise specific webinars, just like this one talking about all the enhancements or best practices within enterprise. So don't unsubscribe from the list. <laughs> we promise not to spam you, uh, but there's a very busy schedule of webinars this year, and I hope you guys can benefit from those. Uh, so thank, I want to thank Oleg and Zhang. Uh, you know, I hope you guys get to know them. They're really nice <laughs> folks, <laughs> uh, but they're really there to help you out. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys can take advantage and hopefully we'll do a better job for you this year. Thank you again. And uh, we'll see you at the next webinar.